as the promo for the book states, Mal's untimely death has always been shrouded in a mystery, and it's an emotional read, what transpires, without giving away too much from the book. Can you talk about what happens on January 4th, 1976, and what leads to the mystery? The signs were there. Fran was probably hoping against hope that Mal was had righted himself. The night before, in a kind of drunken fit, he had written his last will and testament, which was his suicide note, essentially. And then the next day, which is a Sunday night, they were taking down the Christmas tree. She thought everything was okay, that maybe it was an aberration the evening before. But man, it wasn't. And uh, Mal began to um, act erratically. And and I, I, I'm of the mind that he'd been planning this for some time. Got out his gun, you know, his Winchester rifle that Fran had given him for his birthday in May 74. That scared John Hornley, who had come over because Fran was concerned. She would often hot call folks to come over if she thought Mal was getting erratic. And uh, well, Hornley saw the gun and he got the hell out of that bedroom. And uh, she said, you know, do you want me to call the police? I'm going to call the police. Mal's like, you call him. At that point, he was waiting for them to come upstairs to tell him to drop the gun. And as we know, Mal, uh, Mal pointed it at them and cops do what cops do. But yeah, this is all, you know, it's interesting the way the way history has looked at this event as though it's mistaken identity or an accident or a domestic dispute. Really, it's what we now call suicide by cop. Right. I guess the the saving grace is Mal didn't take anybody else with him. I think his story would have ended so much better than maybe. I was just thinking of, uh, you know, Jimmy Nickel, the, the, the Beatles drummer for, you know, Wherever week he is. Two, right. <laughs> but, you know, for him, Mal Evans would have been a celebrated, beloved figure. He would have really, I think, enjoyed all of the adoration from the fans as we get into the 80s and 90s and 2000s. It's just that's that's what I was left thinking about after finishing the book. It's like, boy, only if, like you say, he just got away for maybe a month, two months, even a year if he needed you know, get cleaned up and he would have been okay. That's the thing you just. You, you wonder about, yeah. I, I mean, obviously he still has the baggage that others did at the time that, you know, it, well, surely the Beatles are just a pop group. They're not going to really be talking about them in 10 years, but of course we do. Uh, yeah. And we will continue to do so for, I, I would think centuries But what's interesting about that moment is I I don't even know that Mal could see a glint of what the future looked like, you know. And of course, when one is in in a mental health crisis or in a state of depression, you can't see anything that looks like a saving grace because all of it was there. You know, I mean, he just spoken to Neil about what they were going to do with putting Apple back together, which would have been a role for Mal. They were he was talking to Paul, talked to John the week of his death. You know, it was all there, but the one area that he'd neglected for so long that was the biggest chasm of grief for him, his family back in London, that was the part that that was his undoing. 